Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Okay, now we're going to answer the question, do piston rings rotate on the pistons as the engine is running? Now these are the pistons that I just took out of the 440. I took, about, I took apart because the block cracked. Roughly a couple hours of running time on this engine, including the break-in. And as you can see, I only have seven pistons here because one of them is at the machine shop for a block being machined. So they're using the piston to machine the block, the board out to make sure they're all the same size. So I only have one. But I did mark the positions of the rings when I took them off before I gave it to the machine shop. Now the first question everybody's going to ask is, how do I know that when I put the rings in, what the position of the rings were? And the answer is in this piece of paper. So I always install the piston rings just before I put it in the block. And I always do it in this order all the time unless the manufacturer recommends something different. I always hold the piston in this orientation where the relief or if there's any dish or cutout relief for valves, I always hold it on top just like this. So I always hold it the same way, just like this. Okay, I hold it like this. And then I put the rings on in this order. The ring is going to fall there. So I always put them on in this order. First, I put the oil rings on. I put the first oil ring on. The first oil ring goes on with the gap right there. Then I put the wiper on. The oil wiper always goes on with the opening of the ring right there. Goes towards the bottom at 9 o'clock. So we got roughly 2 o'clock. I'm sorry, 6 o'clock. So 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock. The next wiper for the oil ring goes up here roughly around, let's say, 10 o'clock. Then I put the rings on. The second ring goes on with the gap down at the bottom right there. And then the top ring goes right here with the red line right there. So that is how I always put the rings on, always in that order. And I'm always holding the piston in the same orientation right before I put the piston in the bore so I know that this is the orientation of the rings right when I put it in the bore. There's also something else to note here. When I put this engine together, I did a lot of writing on the inside. I put, I labeled the rods with a Sharpie marker, just a regular Sharpie marker. I labeled the rods. I weighed the pistons. I put the weight there. I put the total weight of each assembly. So I made sure that they all weighed the same. So. The marks that I put on the pistons are still there. Running the engine simply doesn't have the ability to wipe away or wash away those marks. They probably stay there for a while. Um, so when you mark things like this, it's good because when you take it apart, you're sure that what you put in came out the same way. So the next question is how do you know you didn't or how do you know that I didn't rotate any of the rings when I took the pistons out of the block? Because when I do, I simply take the cap off, I take the cap off, the end of the bearing cap, I take the, the, the bearings out, take the cap off, take the bearings out, and I gently pop the piston out of the bore, and when I do, I lay it down. And these pistons have not been touched ever since I took the engine apart. Now the next question will be, can you reuse piston rings? And the answer is yes, I have reused piston rings. Um, if I am, if I have an engine that I'm, I, I've had engines where I've run them on a dyno, take it apart, put the uh, piston right back in the, the same board it came out of, I've used the same rings before. Uh, the only thing that's going to change, and I can't answer that question right now, whether or not I'm going to use these rings, because I have to wait until I get the block back so I can put the rings in the board and measure the gap. Hopefully, the machine shop and it's a great machine shop, uh, if the bore is exactly the same size with the crosshatch pattern in the inside, there'll be no problem reusing these piston rings as long as the gap is okay for the rings. I say that because if the, the machine shop happens to make the bore a little too big and the gap is too wide, you'd have to use new rings. Uh, and since this engine only had a couple hours on it, these rings really didn't have a chance to seat. The rings seat when the engine gets to the proper operating temperature and it's operated under a load for at least 30 minutes to an hour. This engine didn't see that kind of use, 
So if when I get the block back, if I check the, the gap in all the rings and if the gap is okay, I absolutely can reuse these rings. Now, what I did was I took each piston and I made a simple chart of where the rings ended up when I took them out and I overlaid them on a, a similar drawing as to the installation. And let me show you how they ended up. Now here's how the gap in the rings ended up. First, the bottom rail for the oil ring uh, right there was where it started. Moved a little bit either way, not a whole lot. Nice grouping, nice and tight. The second would have been the wiper, which would have been here. Again, moved the same direction. They moved counterclockwise. So this one would have been here. This one would have been on top of it. Then the top oil wipe, uh, the top scraper, which was right here, again, moved the same direction. About the same amount. Pretty close. So it's fair to say that this pack of oil rings with the wipers if it's going to rotate they're going to rotate as a pack they're going to stay together these are pretty tight when they fit in that groove and these rotated but they all kind of rotated the same direction next we have the second ring which is this ring they all started right here and again these all rotated the same direction with the exception of one now I don't have these numbered, what number pistons they are, but I can say that the one that rotated slightly the opposite direction, it either started there, or if it moved that way, it matched up with dots from the other one. So it could be as I put it in, they rotated, and or the uh, the compressor, as I did that, if it rotated a little bit, I could have rotated when I did when I was putting the piston in the bore. And finally, our top ring. The top ring, these also move the same direction, a couple the opposite direction, but they're fairly nicely grouped. So all of them moved. They all moved kind of in the same direction as, as they uh, were going through the up and down in the, in the bore. And the groupings are nice and tight. There's nothing way out of line to indicate that this ring rotated 90 degrees. It might have been, I'm going to say this is a sweep of maybe 15, 20 degrees at the most. So now that we know the rings do rotate, the question is, what makes them rotate? Now I will admit, it's very possible that when I was putting the, the uh, pistons into the bore, rotating that ring compressor a little bit, very well could account for some of this. But they all, uh, since they all moved in the same direction, there's no way that I move that, uh, well there is a possibility, it's very small though. I'm very careful about holding that straight. Uh, rotating that a little bit as it's going in the bore. So we know they move a little bit, so the question is what would make them rotate when the engine is running? When you have a brand new engine or a brand new block that you're building and hopefully you had it machined, the machine shop is going to hone the inside of the cylinder after they machine it and they're going to put a cross hatch pattern inside the bore. And that crosshatch pattern, depending on the stone, the grit, depending on how it's done and how fast it's moved, if it's a, a high-end machine shop and it's done through a machine, it should be very even. If it's done by hand, you can do a, a hand hone. I've done that before. And the crosshatch pattern, the angle of the crosshatch can change, the, the depth, a lot of things can change about that crosshatch. And as the engine is breaking in when you first start it up, that crosshatch pattern is going to, let's say it's going to help the ring find its natural home where it wants to ride inside the bore. So the crosshatch pattern from the honing is going to make the rings move a little bit. Since the bore of this, and these rings are never really seated inside the, the bores themselves, it's fair to say that that crosshatch pattern played a significant role in not only that they rotated, the, the direction. Now I have the block and I looked at it and the crosshatch pattern can still be seen in there. And it's, it's tough to take a picture of it because crosshatch is really hard to see, but it kind of looks like the pattern going counterclockwise as we see as how, how the rings actually moved in there. The, the, the count, if you were to look inside there, you can see a counterclockwise pattern more than clockwise. So it's possible, most likely, that the home pattern inside the cylinder made these rings move 
let's say within the first 15, 10, 15 minutes of startup and running, okay? It didn't run right off the bat, so it, when the engine started, uh, we had to make a couple adjustments, and when we finally got it running, we kept it running uh, for the hour for break-in. So once they started the seat, chances are they didn't move. And if this were an engine that were broken in, and it had significant time on it with, with temperature, heat, and the rings were allowed to seat, I'm gonna say that these rings would not rotate at all from where they are. They would seat, they would stay there, and most likely be there for the life of the engine. So when I get the block back, the new block, I'm gonna take the rings off, put them in the cylinders, each cylinder, check the gap, and if the gap is okay, I will reuse these rings. They never seated, so I looked at them under magnification. They don't have the seat lines on them, so they're, they're okay. They're still flat. They can be reused. That's the plan. We'll see what happens when I get the block back from the machine shop. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.